three, two, one. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of the Nine Hole Podcast. This is your host, Ian Miller. I've been fortunate enough to have, you know, great coaches, great athletes on here coming in, talking about their story, giving advice to the next generation. And today I am extremely fortunate to have dudes that are going to be at that level come soon, right? Uh, amongst the Division One ranks, hopefully, maybe amongst the professional ranks, right? Coming up, Ty, I'm joined today by Tyler Huzzy and Matthew Van Ostenbridge. I did not mess those names up. Thank the Lord. So Tyler is an NJIT <laughs> commit. Matthew is a Penn State commit. Um, man, I, I just love to kind of you know, pick pick through your journey a little bit, hear what's worked for you boys. So obviously, like the recruiting landscape nowadays is huge. It was vastly different than when I went through the process, dude. Big time different. I would love to kind of see, I'd love to hear, man, what worked for you guys, what didn't work for you guys, because there are people in the chat right now uh, that want to be like you too. Um, so it would be great to pick your brain, have you guys bless them with the knowledge that you know Maybe it makes the process a little bit easier for them. You know what I mean? Like that's that's big time. First, before we get going, man, I'd love to give a shout out to the sponsor of today's stream, right? So the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society, uh, Cleveland Student Visionaries of the Year. Um, man, it is a philanthropic leadership development program for exemplary high school students. That is a mouthful. I'm sweating reading it. Highly motivated leaders embark on a journey of professional growth, fostering professional skills such as entrepreneurship, marketing, and project management, all while working to raise as much as possible for the fight against blood cancer. That is big time. The link will be in the description. You guys will see the banner at the top here. It's for a great cause. Check it out. I appreciate you guys over at LLS, the, uh, the Cleveland Student Visionaries of the Year. Without further ado, Let's get into it. Let's talk some baseball here. Let's talk about the journey. So, Tyler, let me ask you first, brother, man. What what has been, like, the overall journey for you? More, more of a, not a broad question, but, like, where are you at right now? Um, man, the, the season's about to start up. You are committed to go to NJIT. You're a catcher. Man, what is, what is life like for you right now as you prepare for the season? Yeah, so right now I think I'm in a very good spot. I mean – I went through two years of varsity baseball, so this third year I'm uh, really experienced and I feel like I could just lead the team now because I have so much experience. And, you know, right now I'm just trying to get as much weight as I can get on because, you know, I wanted some bombs this year. Mm. So I'm just trying to bulk up a lot and just, you know, lead the team, um, just be that high character guy, bring the energy every day. And, uh, yeah, I just want to be that guy that everybody can go to and just know that that uh, I can lead the team and, you know, just being that leader. That's really my biggest thing right now. Dude, I, I love that. Matthew, what about you, brother? Where are you at right now in the journey as you prepare uh, to get started, man, and, and kind of have another dominant season? Yeah, yeah. I mean, similar to Ty, I want to be like the big leader on my team. Um Right now, I'm, I'm trying to gain as much weight as possible, put on strength, you know, going into the season. Um, just came off a really good swimming season. Um, lost some weight during swimming season, but I got to put it back on. Um, I'm ramping up right now, and uh, by the start of March, I should be at 100%. That's fantastic. So, um, Ty, you, you hit on this is going to be your third season on varsity. Matt, how many years have you been on varsity? I've been on varsity two years. This will be my third season. Okay, no doubt, dude. I man, that's fantastic. You when we think about Division One athletes, it's like man, they're first round dudes. You know what I mean? They're six five. They throw a hundred. They are they're blessed, right? It's awesome to see that man. Maybe maybe you guys weren't on varsity as freshmen, right? I didn't get a chance to play on varsity at my high school until I was a junior. They stuck me out in right field. I hit in the nine hole, dude. You know what I mean? I had to earn it. It's it's fantastic to see that. I absolutely love it, man. So you you gave a little bit of intro on your guy on on yourself, your story, where you're at in preparation of getting started this year, man. I, I wanted to touch on just just before we get into it, like you guys have goals and aspirations. Um, you guys are already cemented in, in making it to the next level, which is incredible to say. What is the end goal? Like what, what is the end goal? Are you hoping maybe in, in three years, maybe four years, get drafted, 
like start the professional climb? Or are you guys just excited to get the degree and just see what, you know, D1 baseball is like? Like maybe take me through the thought process as you guys are going to go through, you know, your last year or so and start getting ready for that next level, dude. Uh, Ty, man, I'll, I'll pass it to you first. What do you think about that? So, I mean, the goal really is just to get drafted. I mean, see, NJIT, it's a really good academic school. So I know a lot of those players have passed up the pro opportunity to go uh, do like very good jobs. But I think the goal is to go pro and just get that, um, get that experience. And so you could just tell your kids, <laughs> tell like, the, the kids you coach just that you went pro. I love and, that. Um, but yeah, but also academics, I'm going, I think I'm going to go into business and, um, you know, I'm just going to try and get a couple job offers and see where life takes me. But yeah, either pro or get a really good job. Yeah, dude, that's fantastic. You, Dude, you can't go wrong having options. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with having options, right? You're going out there, you're going to get a first class education. You're going to be playing first class baseball, division one baseball. I had somebody, um, Giuseppe uh, Papachio. Right. He, he used to be a coach uh, over at NGIT. He is now the associate head coach at Seton Hall. It's fantastic, man. It's awesome. It's awesome, man. You're going to you're going to kill it over there. I'm looking forward to seeing the success there. Matt, what about you do? What do you what are you hoping to accomplish? What are you hoping to achieve is the end goal? Obviously, I am bypassing like Division one baseball right now. I'm thinking long term is the goal to get drafted, make it to the big leagues. Are you just focused on maybe getting the education and seeing where where it takes you, dude? What is what are the daydreams like right now for you? Yeah, end goals MLB, obviously, you know, um, like a long career in the major leagues is is everything I've ever wanted, you know, like 10, 15 years in the bigs, big salary, you know, happy family. That's right, brother. That's right. That's my goal. I love that. I love that, man. So, dude, I, we're, we're going to talk about it. I have this, I have this quote written down uh, in order to achieve things that others can't. You need to be willing to do things that others won't, right? So you boys are headed to the cream of the crop. You guys are going to be in Division One baseball. You guys have done things that other people can't, right? You're willing to do things. You're willing to sacrifice things that other people aren't willing to do. Um, before we get into that, right, I'm getting excited about that. I love talking about the grind of overcoming adversity, talking about the challenges and stuff that you boys had to overcome. man. But, but first, I wanted to hit on, like, how'd you get recruited? Like, how did you get seen? How did you get the name out there? Was it a specific instance? Was it a specific team? Was it a specific app, right? You boys are, you you guys are affiliated with the Tri-State Arsenal, right? Coach Mack, thank you for hooking us up. That's fantastic, right? The, the you know, just the, what, what, what am I saying? The, the people that watch the podcast, man, it's fantastic just being able to, you know, connect on, on a deeper level, like, Dude, Ty, what about you, man? What like what how'd you get seen, dude? Like, what was that process like? What worked for you? And man, I mean, how could people kind of take stuff from your story and implement it into theirs to benefit themselves? Yeah. All right. So um how I got seen was really uh Coach Mac. I mean, he he knows so much guys and he really I gave him video all the time and he sent it out to colleges. And these college coaches, they start seeing your video and they start liking you more. And then, um, yeah, so I got seen from one of like my highlight videos from the summer. And it was, I think my freshman year, that's first when I started getting seen. And then freshman year was slow. Sophomore year started to pick up a little bit more. And I started talking to more coaches. And then they, they implemented a new rule that you can't talk to any coaches until August of your uh sophomore summer okay and then so it kind of slowed down a little bit and then right when august 1st hit started talking with co coaches again and then njit came along and then you know they saw a couple videos i got on a on a phone call and then i just ended up at the prospect camp and then from there i just kind of fell in love with the coaches and yeah, that's really how I got recruited, just videos. Yeah, okay, dude, so that's big, right? Like, in order for me to get seen, I remember my mom showing up to one of my games. Dude, I, I think this was my junior year, and she showed up with a, a camera, 
Uh, she got some video of me taking BP on a dumpy field, right? We're just trying to get some swings on camera. She she got some video of me, I think, getting three at bats. Uh, I stole a couple bases, and then I was just throwing from the outfield, man. So that's fantastic hearing that maybe, you know, the, the, the scouting videos, the recruiting videos are the way to go, man. I, so Coach Mac kind of helped you with that was was it coach mac that took the videos was it was it maybe at a, a game or a showcase that you got that video like how what videos were you outreaching to these these schools or coach mac was outreaching was that like home video shots no so it was um i took a couple videos from in season like in game clips and got it. i just kind of got all my highlights i got maybe 1 minute 2 minute video of just straight hits and straight like highlights and i did one for hitting one for catching and then like occasionally i'll take like a couple videos of my swing and send it to some college coaches that i'm talking to but really it was the like in-game clips that really got me seen love that matt what about you brother how did you get seen like what was that process like because man i've, I've heard a lot about you guys like the next generation man they can learn a lot from this right now yeah, yeah. You know, um, before Arsenal, I'd played on a smaller team um, and we hadn't played in any big tournaments. Um, and so up until like like the summer of my sophomore year, I didn't really talk to anyone, you know. Um, and then that, that summer after my sophomore year, I started playing with Arsenal, connected with Coach Mack. Um, he started talking to everyone. Um, I found out about how to use like Twitter to get my stuff out there. That was huge for me. Like, um, I, I would I would put a video up on Twitter. I'd tag Flatground. I'd tag probably like ten coaches, um, and then Flatground would like retweet it, and it would get like fifty thousand views. And like it was like bullpen videos, game videos, and I like my DMs were just flooded. That's fire, dude. So there's there's yeah. a picture. He he got traded, man. I, I I think he might be at the Brewers now. It's so bad that I don't know this. I should know this. Justin Topa. Uh, he went to LIU Brooklyn. I played against him at Wagner. Um, I forget who we got drafted by, uh, but he was, dude, he was with the Mariners, right? Uh, before he was with the Mariners, before he was closing games with the Mariners, he was out of baseball. He got released. He went back. Uh, he kind of dove into the baseball data, and I saw that on Twitter he was getting his clips out. He was getting, you know, that flat ground app. He was getting all that stuff out, right? Baseball, you know, the rotation, the all that stuff break. Dude, uh, a year later, he's closing games in the big leagues because of the stuff that he was doing on Twitter. So that's fantastic. I love to hear all that. Um, that fires me up, man. How about, um, let's see here. What about biggest challenges or obstacles that you boys had to overcome in your journey to get to where you're at now? Um, Tyler, like, was there anything, was there any, you know, sp specific things that blocked you from kind of getting to where you're at now? How did you overcome them? Like, what was the biggest challenge or obstacle that you had to overcome? So, yeah, it was uh, last year, probably the biggest obstacle I had. Um, right before the season, I dislocated my shoulder blade. And, throwing shoulder? Uh, yeah, throwing shoulder. It was brutal. And um, How? I guess I, I really, we don't know how, but I guess I was working too much. I guess I kind of put too much on myself at once. So I think I just overworked that and and then like right before the season I was just hurting and then we get in season I take like two days off and then it's feeling good and then I remember I was I had a good game I was versing this the Gatorade pitcher of the year it was he's uh at Rutgers now it's uh his name is like Zach something Zach K I don't know how to pronounce his last name but okay. I have I got a hit up the middle against him and then I go out into the field my arm was feeling good I throw a ball and just pure pain I felt like I felt like a, a click and then I felt it go back so after that it was kind of brutal and then I was I was going to PT a lot I was uh I like left school early and like lunchtime went to PT came back, played a game through the pain. And uh, I remember I took another two days off, like complete rest, no swinging, no nothing. And then that really helped me. Um, I was wrapping myself before every game. And uh, 
yeah, that was like one of the biggest obstacles I overcame. It's big time. Dude, that's big time. What about you, Matt? Yeah, I mean, I've never had to deal with any big injuries. Um, and I, I credit that a lot to doing multiple sports, also swimming. Um, but physically, um, my biggest obstacle was always putting on weight and gaining strength. Um, and then, like, mentally, it was, like, kind of knowing what path to take. Because, you know, I never had anyone um, to, to help guide me through it. Like, I didn't, I didn't like, like, before, like, I came to Arsenal, I didn't know what to do. You know, I had, I didn't talk to any coaches up till like midway of my sophomore like summer. Dang, dude. So that's big. Okay, you guys both kind of alluded to the fact that you know you one of the biggest challenges, right? Biggest obstacles. You guys, you guys hit on it right now, but also earlier, like you're trying to keep weight on. You're trying to put weight on, obviously, throughout the course of you know the whole season, the whole school year, right? Um, man, it, it it is tough to put weight on, especially when you're growing. Right. Especially when the body is growing, man, you're getting bigger, right? You're maturing, you're filling out. What is the workouts like with you guys right now? Um, man, for me, I was I wasn't 100 percent sure if I should have been kind of working out right when I was in high school. Dude, I was a pipsqueak. I was a little skinny guy. Dude, I was like I was tiny, man. So I, any type of workouts that I did, I, it was really more like body weight stuff. Dude, I couldn't put up any type of weight. Matt, I know you're a swimmer, so like that strengthens the shoulders, dude. That strengthens everything. Ty, are, what are you doing, um, you know, working out wise? Is that something that you've been incorporating kind of throughout your high school career? Like when did you start working out and do you, how often do you get after it? Yeah, so uh, I think I started lifting weights my freshman year. Okay. Um, so I started doing that and, you know, it wasn't really like, really intense my freshman year but I was still doing it and then that was just like with dumbbells and stuff but then last year I started picking up like the heavy weights and um you know now I'm doing this like baseball based workout it's uh it's five days a week um and then the sixth day I usually do like a full body day or like a recovery day and then it's really just it's really like plyometrics and just really just like, like focusing on certain parts of the body and just really rotation core. And then we have occasional like heavy lifting stuff. Like I do a lot of box squats. I do a lot of lunges and I'm not really a big like uh, benching guy or like really squatting guy, but I usually try to do like dumbbell bench or just a lot of like band work and all that. Love it. Matt, what about you, brother? Yeah, so I started lifting in eighth grade, um, and then in ninth grade, it really got serious when I started lifting with the swim team, um, and, you know, that was like four to, three, four days a week of lifting, um, and then now I just got on a new, a new strength program with uh, Russ France up at Next Play Sports um, in Schuylkill Haven, PA, um, and so he's got me on a plan program to, uh, like, like, specifically for pitching. Um, to train the movements and to make me throw harder. I love it, dude. It's it's that was something for me in my journey, right? When I was kind of going through college and and you know I was matured, right? Uh, I was you know I was max height, was my max weight, whatever that was. Man, I was able to lift. I was lift heavy in the off season. You know what I mean? But then once once the season rolled around, it's about keeping yourself on the field, right? So you might not, maybe you're not maxing out in the in the box squat area. Uh, when you have a game tonight, you know what I mean? Um, it, it's it's kind of crazy how that works, dude. When I was in the big leagues, when I was in double A, triple A, and I, and I really started kind of taking that serious workout programs, at least for me, what the Mariners had me doing was, you know, Monday, this is off season, mind you. So Monday would be like um, upper body. Tuesday would be lower body. Wednesday would be a recovery day. Thursday would be lower body. And Friday, right, go into the weekend with an upper body day, right? So it's not like, you know, we'd be we'd be moving some weight around, right? We'd be trying to we'd be trying to gain mass, get bigger, but it, you know, being smart, not blowing out. So it sounds like you boys are you guys got you guys started lifting and, and working out and getting after it way before I did. So it's dude, it's awesome to hear that you guys are on plans. You guys know what you were doing, and you guys are being guided the right way. It's fantastic. It, we have a bunch of people in the chat here. Feel free to say hey, drop us a question. Um, man, I, we're having a great conversation here with Matt and Tyler. Appreciative of your time. So I alluded to this earlier, 
right? I had this quote written down. It fired me up. In order to achieve things that others can't, you need to be willing to do things others won't, right? So you boys are about to be D1 bandits. You guys are about to go to the next level, right? People only dream of being able to do this. That's serious. That's however you want to say it. It might sound a little stuck up. It's the truth. Like, dude, there's a very minuscule amount of people that get to go on and play Division One baseball. The numbers, that percentile is even smaller, right? Moving on to the next level. Sounds like you boys are on your way. You guys are doing everything you need to be doing. But I'm sure getting to the D1 level, which I'm, I know you guys aren't necessarily there yet, but you guys are committed to get there. It hasn't been all glitz and glam, right? In order to get to where you guys want to get, you guys had to do shit, excuse me, do stuff other people aren't willing to do, right? Um, what did you have to sacrifice to make this happen? Were you guys, you know, um, sacrificing your weekends, right? You guys might have a party on Saturday night, house party, open house, parents are going to be there, but you know, you got a workout on Sunday morning, right? You guys might have to bail on that. Like what kind of sacrifices did you guys have to make? Just, just talking about my story a little bit, right? Dude, I remember my senior year, I really wanted to make the Keystone State games. I had been cut my junior year, and I'm like, damn it, dude, I'm going to make it this senior year. Um, dude, so I had homecoming, right? I had a girlfriend at the time. I had homecoming, right? It was a thing where, like, after homecoming, we would go to this after party, a school function, and it's kind of like an overnight thing. I had to bail on it. My mom had to pick me up early. I had to leave the homecoming party early because I had a workout. Uh, I think it was, like, 7 a.m. were tryouts, dude. I went straight from the homecoming after party. My mom picked me up and we went straight to the baseball workout, ended up fucking making that team. That's where the Wagner coach saw me, right? I sacrificed maybe something that that seemed like everybody else was doing fun, like everybody else gets to experience that. But nope, not everybody gets to experience Division One baseball, dude. I'm willing to sacrifice that stuff to go achieve my dreams. What did you guys have to sacrifice? Maybe that like no one else really, really like gave up. You know what I mean? Like it's, it's all glitz and glam seeing the division one title, the division one commitment. But like, what was that really like that Tyler hit me with it, man? Did, did you have to sacrifice anything? Did you have to give up anything just to say, Hey dude, I'm staying committed here. Yeah, definitely. Um, I think my sixth grade year, this was uh kind of the start of where I kind of started to realize. Um, so there was like the sixth grade party and it was like, I went to the mall. I was like getting, getting an outfit. And then I had practice the same day. And my dad told me, he was like, you really want to go to this party? And I was like, I don't know what should I do. And he wasn't going to tell me that I can't go to the party. And I was, I was like, nah, I'm going to practice. And then I go to practice. I get some shade thrown on me for not going to the party, but I was like, this is what I want to do. I was oh. like, this is what I want. <laughs> I want baseball. And uh, that's kind of where I started realizing that I, I got to separate myself from from uh, people who support me and people who just want to bring me down and kind of just do what they do. So, Dude. Yeah. Yes. I love it. So, like, thinking about that, separating yourself, the dudes that are throwing shade at you, are they in the position that you're in? No. Love that. Love that. Absolutely love that. Matt, what about you, brother? What did you have to sacrifice to get to where you're at right now? Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of time with friends, um, like parties, stuff like that, like things I've been invited to. Um, I don't have like a specific time that I was invited to something that I had to to not go to it. Um, but there was just a lot of things I had to say no to um, because of baseball, you know, you know, yeah. but it paid off. Dude, that's fantastic. Like, do the hard work. And the sacrifice always pays off. I, I saw something. I think I posted it on my on my Instagram, like a my personal Instagram, a, a story about Kevin Garnett, um, you know, talking about basketball, like just saying, dude, the hard work always pays off. It might not pay off right now when you want it to, but like when you least expect it, dude, you're going to be able to rely on that hard work. And, and just like knowing the stuff that you guys are sacrificing and doing and getting after is just going to set you guys up. You know what I mean? Like where does where does the confidence come from? Where does confidence comes from? It comes from the hard work that you put in behind the scenes, right? That's that's how I was able to kind of like remain confident through slumps, right? Through bad times. It's like, dude, I I freaking grinded to get to this point, right? So it's awesome to be able to like 
you know, fall back on that hard work. You know what I mean? Not, not become uh, complacent dude. That's, that's awesome. Right. If you could, if you become complacent, you die, right. Adapt or die. That's what it is. So let me, let me touch on some individual development and skill set questions. Tyler, I'm going to hit you with something first. The question I was going to ask you was, when did you get good at catching? When did you know? I know that you said like sixth grade is really when things were like, okay, maybe I'm different. Maybe I'm willing to sacrifice, you know, a party for my for my long term dreams. I'm, I'm willing to maybe delay, you know, gratification to go get it right. What like? When did it really become a reality for you? I know that sixth grade, it, it, things started kind of, you know, going that way. But when was it like, dude, okay, I think I'm a division one catcher. Yeah. So my middle school years, it was, uh, it was kind of rough catching. Um, at times I was like, man, maybe I'm just a second baseman or maybe just I'm an infielder because uh, my eighth grade year, I actually got, I didn't get the starting job at catcher. So they stuck, they stuck me in left field, never played left field in my life. And, uh, yeah, I was like, man, maybe it's not, not it. And then, um, I get to my freshman year and then I started like focusing more on catching and I was like, yeah, th I'm, I'm going to do it. And then I remember this one drill I did with my coach, he was standing behind me and he threw a ball against the wall and I just had to block it. And from there, I don't know how, but it just something clicked and I started becoming more confident. And then I went to these winter workouts for uh, high school. And then I get there and I was, uh, I was catching Zach Crotchfelt. He's a sophomore pitcher at Auburn right now. He's throwing 90, 97 right now. So I was catching him as a freshman that put a lot of confidence on me. I was like, yeah, man, I'm, I'm going to go D1. I was like, that, that's kind of been the, the mindset from the get-go. I'm like, I'm going D1 and I'm not going to settle for anything else. Dude, that's fantastic. That's it's badass even to hear like you're in eighth grade and you didn't get the starting catching job, but you did not let that deter you from the long term, the long term dream. Dude, I remember seventh grade. I got cut from Legion baseball, did not make my Legion team, didn't make it. Fast forward 10 years later, they're giving me a shout out when I made my big league debut. Hey, congrats to, uh, you know, Legion alum. I'm like, hey, you guys cut me. I made sure I said that, man. That's that's fantastic. I think that's big time to, to, you know, to relay that message, dude. That's awesome. Not giving up, dude, being persistent, uh, you know, in that pursuit of the dream. It's, it's fantastic. Matt, what about you, dude? When did it, when was it just like, yo, I'm, I'm a division one caliber pitcher. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I was always like above average, but I was never like the best through like elementary, middle school, like little league stuff. Um, I always threw pretty hard, but never like the hardest on the team. Um, but then my freshman year, um, I was up to like 82 and I was like, man, like I was looking at like other guys, like top of my class, they were like 86, 87. And I was like, I'm lefty. And I'm like four to five miles an hour behind him. I was like, man, I, I really got a shot at this. And wow. that, that, that's when it, that's when it really hit me. I love it. So we got a, we got a question here in the chat. Playing at the division one level is really hard. What made these guys want to choose the more difficult path? So you guys know that there are going to be trials and tribulations as you grind towards this long-term goal, right? You guys are going to dominate the Division One level. You guys are going to go get drafted. You're going to get a great education. You're going to make it to the big leagues. You guys are going to play 10 to 15 years in the show, make a bunch of money, retire happy, healthy, have a great family. But you guys know that this is going to be a difficult path. Like what made you guys choose this difficult path? Ty, let me, let me hit you with that first. Yeah, so it's just really, it's my love for the game. It's, I want to play this game as long as I can. And there's nothing stopping me from giving this sport up. And, you know, taking the harder path, it's, it's the right thing to do because it's just, I love this game so much and I can never imagine stop playing it. I'm just scared of the, the day that I can't put a baseball jersey on again. Ah, dude, that, that makes a ton of sense. Matt, what about you, dude? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I love the game um, just as much as Ty. And, you know, like, like it, it's really like the end vision. It, it's the it's the long run. Like other people might win it up front. They might have more fun in their 20s, you know. But like when I retire with millions of dollars. Come on, I'm on top. That's right, baby. That's right, dude. That's right. Um, Matt, what, so where you're at right now, right? Um, you're, you're a dominant left handed pitcher. 
what I, you, you touched on, I, I will hit on, you know, the multiple sport thing here coming up soon with the swimming. Obviously, that is big time. I had Randy Johnson on this podcast a couple months ago, and he was preaching play multiple sports, play multiple sports. That's going to help you develop, you know, certain muscles and skill sets maybe that you've never been able to do on the baseball field, right? If you're swimming, dude, you're going to work out muscles and, and gain strength in certain spots maybe that you won't just play in baseball, right? If, if you're playing basketball, you might have a certain, you know, develop balance and anything like that. Right. Randy kind of alluded to that, touched on it. Um, like I absolutely love it, Matt. What, what is the long toss, you know, program? Like, are you long tossing? Um, is that something that you kind of incorporate to your, to your routine? Yeah. Yeah. I, I long toss all the time, you know, and like what swimming really did for me was it, it trained the decelerators like in my lats and on the back of my shoulder, which is, which is why I've been injury free. Um, and like a lot of guys that they, they get to high velocities, but they can't slow their arms down after the pitch and their decelerators take a big toll. Um, and so that's how I've been able to keep healthy velocity, um, in season. I long toss every day, um, plyos, arm care, bands, all that stuff. Dude, I, that's fantastic too. That is fantastic. Ty, where I know you said you're trying to put on some weight, right? You want to bang, right? You want to hit for power. Right. You want to have some pop, dude. What what is like the BP routine like for you? I'm, I know that depending on where you're at, if you're in high school or you're, you're 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 with the arsenal, you guys might have like specific rounds. You guys might have to do specific things depending on if it's the first round, second round. Right. Go oppo, hit and run, working on bunts, all this stuff. But what are you trying to accomplish in BP? Like, do you go into BP with a purpose? Is every round does every swing have a purpose? If you're if you're grinding in the cage, like, does that have a purpose? Man, walk me through that a little bit. Yeah, so uh, my BP rounds, it's usually – I'm never really trying to hit home runs. Um, I like to stay gap to gap, and usually in my BP rounds, I go I go oppo. I go middle to oppo because, really, that's what I'm really trying to work on And because I know my hands are quick enough to get to that inside pitch. So I never really have to work on that inside pitch, so I'm trying to let the ball travel, let it get deep and hit it opposite way because that's uh, that's just how I'm going to – separate myself from, uh, you know, good hitters and great hitters. That's right, dude. That's right, dude. I, I always heard this, man. I always heard this. This was always preached to me throughout my career, right? I was a little speed guy, right? I made it to the big leagues as a defensive replacement and as a pinch runner. I was a dude that could just fly, right? I had I, I could go catch a baseball, but I had to learn how to hit, right? Um, that's, that's fantastic. Is Ty, is that kind of the approach – is that the approach in game, right? I, I, of course, I just skipped this, getting excited about about my story, right? I'm being selfish, but I always heard, dude, anybody can hit BP home runs, right? So it's it's cool to to hear that you have a purpose on every swing, every round. Is that kind of the same, you know, the same thought process when you're in the heat of battle in game? Oh yeah. So uh, what I re what I really do to my my mind, I really say, I just repeat it, middle, middle, middle. And then I'm just trying to stay up the middle. And, you know, if I get if I get jumpy, I'm always going to lunge and I'm going to pull the ball. I never I never really want to do that. So I just say middle, middle, middle and then try to hit the opposite way. Dude, that's I love it. I love it. So coming up through the Mariners system, I got to just maybe two more questions for you guys, man. Again, I'm extremely appreciative of your time. It's awesome to have you guys here talking about, you know, your stories. It's awesome. Got, you know, a question or two in the chat. It's absolutely fantastic um just it's awesome dude it's awesome so oh, i got something else here we got another question you said that these players had multiple offers from great programs Ooh, what made them decide on the school they committed to dude that is a fantastic question i uh yeah what made what made you go to njit Ty? like what I, was that maybe close to home? Was that a specific like program coach related thing? Like what, what made you go there? Yeah. So NJIT, it's in my state, New Jersey. And um, really what made me go there is just the coaching staff, the coaching staff, you know, it just kind of, they kind of just like made me feel like home and I just love what they play for. I just love how they play. They play to win. They, um, they have this saying, it's like, they, they don't care how they win. They just want to win. And that's really, that's what I want to do. I just want to win. And also the campus, the campus is great. The education is great. 
And really when I got on campus, I always was, I was taught to, um, you'll just know if, if there's a click, there's a click. And, you know, when I got on campus, there was that click. And then I just uh, I pulled the trigger and I went with NJIT. Matt, what about you, brother? So I know Coach uh, Gambino is over there right now. He was yeah, he was at same. Boston College, um, yeah. I, I believe, dude. So I am familiar with Coach Gambino. Um, got to got to talking to him a little bit throughout my pro career. Kind of stayed in touch with him. It's fantastic, you know, to hear that you're going there, man. What made you decide to go the Penn State route? Yeah, so I was originally committed to Kent State, um, and then I you know I, I love the place, love the coaches, love the program. Um, but I, I decided I wanted to be closer to home, you know, um, so I, I decommitted. Uh, I got in front of the Penn State staff. Um, they, they gave me an offer. Um, you know, I, I went on my official visit there, you know, I absolutely loved the place. And it, it felt like home, you know. It's awesome. Um, it, it's, it's a place I've always wanted to go to. For sure, dude. That's, the, man, that's awesome. I remember, Ty, I remember, you know, traveling out to NJIT, right? I was playing Wagner baseball. I remember seeing, you know, the stadium. It's fantastic. I also remember getting my ass kicked playing you guys. So that's that's awesome that you guys are going, you know, you guys are going to be in top, top-notch top spots, man. Awesome to hear. So, Matt, I, I, I wanted to touch on the swimming thing, right? Two more questions for you guys. I wanted to yeah. touch on the swimming thing. Uh, Ty, are you, are, have you dabbled in other sports, man? Have you maybe developed, you know, skill sets uh, from other sports? Oh, yeah. So uh, I was a big hockey guy. Um <laughs> Yeah, I played hockey for most of my childhood and, you know, it really, it really developed my speed and my legs that they just became huge from just skating every day. And, you know, I loved hockey, but I had to give it up for uh, baseball. For sure. For sure. And Matt, I, what has the swimming done, right, for, for your career? We kind of alluded to it earlier, right? It's It's great for the shoulders, man. It's great for, I'm sure, muscle groups, maybe that aren't being strengthened or utilized right on the baseball field. Like, yeah. like I said, Randy Johnson came on here, fellow left-handed pitcher said, dude, please play multiple sports when you're a young athlete. What do you think that it's done for you? Yeah. I mean, it, it developed my full body, um, like arms, legs. It, there's no stress in the joints when you swim. I mean, it's in, there's like no risk for injury pretty much. Um, but other than physical, it also trained like mental stuff, like discipline, you know, because it's it's very rigorous, you know, and it's it's it can be very tough mentally. Um, when every day, like for two three hours, you're looking at a black line on the bottom of the pool while you're struggling for oxygen, you know. It, <laughs> dude, yeah. Yeah. Wait, now that hey, you put it like that, dude. Oh, yeah. My goodness. Yeah, you're struggling for oxygen. Stare. Yeah, dude. What? That's sick. The discipline's yeah. awesome. The mental side of things is awesome. That's how that's kind of how I got acclimated, you know, in the sports podcast world, man. Just talking about that stuff. Got another question in the chat here. What is the favorite MLB team? Right. So anyone in particular that you guys hope to get drafted by? Let's say the stars align. The stars align. You guys are both first rounders in in let's say four years, right? You guys get drafted out of your junior year. You guys are both first rounders. Where are you going, Ty? You know, I'm going with the Philadelphia Phillies. Yeah. <laughs> Love it. Love that. Dude, what about you, Matt? Mm, I've always been a big Dodgers fan. Dude, can't go wrong. Yeah. Cannot go wrong. Yeah. I absolutely love it, dude. Those are those are big name teams. I got I got the Phillies winning it this year. I think the Phillies are gonna win it this year. Obviously, the Dodgers have made a huge splash. Dude, I, I'm reading, not to get too too far into the weeds here, but dude, I, I was reading that. The Phillies actually made a bigger, better offer to Yamamoto, right? That that pitcher that's just absolutely nasty, right? But he, you know, he wanted to join the ranks um, of Shohei Otani and everything. Dude, that would have been that would have been nuts. Kyle Schwarber, good ex teammate, big fan of him. Dude, Trey Turner, all the all those guys, man, I, I, big fans of them, man. That's awesome. Um, last question I got for you guys, man. Last question I got for you guys. This is the nine hole podcast, right? So, dude, I I was fortunate enough to make it to the big leagues in the nine hole. Like I was a grinder, I was a walk on, right? I man, on on when I was hot, I was fortunate enough to be in the leadoff spot, but I was always a grinder, right? I I was always kind of the bottom of the barrel, you know, bottom of the order type dude. When you guys think you guys have two different perspectives, right? Because we got a catcher and we got a pitcher here, right? 
Ty, I would love to get your take on this first. When you think about the nine hole, man, what kind of characteristics come to mind with a good nine hole hitter, dude? So let's say you are a stud now. You guys are a you guys are big fish in a small pond, right? You guys are going to go to NJIT and Penn State, and you guys are going to be big fish in a big pond, right? So maybe maybe Ty, you're starting out in the nine hole, right? Um, Matt, maybe maybe you're not necessarily in the role your freshman year that you're hoping to be. So you're going to have to grind from the nine hole on the pitching side of things. Ty, what what do you got when you think about a nine hole hitter? What kind of characteristics and traits does a fantastic nine hole hitter need to possess? Yeah, so nine hole, I usually always think of it as the anchor of the lineup. Um, I think that's like one of the biggest pieces of the lineup. Um, so what I think is you got to be fast. I think you got to be consistent and you just got to be like, you just got to be gritty. I mean, you you got to, you got to get on base somehow, some way, and you just got to figure it out. But I think the nine hole is one of the biggest um, at bats of the, of the game. And, you know, just really to get to the lineup all set. Big time, dude, Matt, let, let's say you're facing, um, man, let, let's say you're facing Ohio state, right? Big 10. It's going to be a big matchup, yeah. right? Uh, dude, you're, you're going through the order. You, you sit down the order, but you're facing a nine hole hitter that you might not have his number. You're, you're a little worried about this dude. You know, you can't leave something out over the plate. Like what does a good nine hole hitter in your opinion, possess like what is he able to do at the bottom of that lineup yeah I mean he's able to fight off a lot of pitches you know work a really good count I mean like if, if he works himself into like a like like, like let, let's let's say I, I start off slider middle middle he takes it fast below away he chases it and then I, I I get a little fancy and he works his he works himself in like a three two count fouls off pitches you know and then gets like walked or gets like a little like flare over the shortstop's head that that's a good nine hole love it dude i love it not an easy out grinder man that's that's fantastic true grit and it's even more fantastic because i associate that nine hole mentality that grittiness that grinder type mentality with northeast baseball players man think about it you boys are practicing yeah. probably inside right now i'm not sure what the weather's like where you guys are at but i know what it's like over here and it is fucking cold Right. So I, I always associate like Northeast baseball players with grinders, right? Being able to do stuff maybe that other dudes on the West Coast or down south didn't have to do. Right. So it's it's even more cool to see where you guys are at, what you guys have accomplished. Tyler Huzzy and Matthew Van Austin Bridge. I can't thank you guys enough for your time. Um, man, thank you guys so much for being here. Um, and and I look forward to seeing the continued success with you guys. Um Ben, any, any any final comments you guys would like to uh you know end with, man? Um yeah, just one to uh the younger athletes. Um so one thing that I really succeeded on and I overcame was uh just playing nervous and playing like kind of timid. And what I really did, I was just starting to play for fun and just to have fun and just baseball is a game and Baseball isn't your whole life. So what I just thought is you just got to play for fun. You got to play for yourself and just take all the pressure off because at the end of the day, it's just a game. Dude, that is, that's fire. That's fire. So I, I just posted something um, on, on our social media, dude. Uh, had the editing team put something together and we just, we just posted something on social media about Justin Steele, who a friend of the podcast, ex-teammate of mine, uh, MLB All-Star, starting pitcher for the Cubs, lefty, just like you, Matt, talking about being able to decompress and kind of not a, not associate you know his off-the-field life with his performance on the field, right? He's more than just a baseball player. When he leaves the field, whether he went 0 for 4 or he couldn't get out of the first inning, right? He goes home, he sees his family, plays video games, he decompresses right? He collects car. He's whatever he does, right? That's awesome, dude. That's fantastic advice right there, Ty. Uh, Matt, you, any closing statements, dude? Yeah. Yeah. Something, uh, a coach told me when I was younger was always play with a smile on your face. I like, always make sure you're happy when you're playing baseball. You know, it's always a good day when you're playing baseball. Amen. You know, and, um, have fun. Dude, that's fantastic. You, you never know when the last time you guys are going to have a jersey on, right? So so cherish it every day. I don't have a jersey on anymore, 
And I would I, jerseys up here on the wall, but I would kill to be able to throw that thing back on, right, and get get after it. Boys, I appreciate your time. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. This is the Nine Hope Podcast. Thank you so much. Catch you guys next time. Take care, fellas. Thank you. See you later. Thank you.